Give him a hug. That's, oh dear. that's a real definition of mother love, though, didn't it? No, that absolutely. Only a mother could love that. Yeah. <laughs> what about what about, um, what about movies? Do you, how do you get into movies, Richard? How did I get in? Yeah, they sort of very early. Can you remember your first movie you ever made? I can. Uh, was it um, Shake Hands with the Devil or oh. Alive and Kicking? Ah, Alive and Kicking. We've got a clip of it here. Have okay. a look at it. All yeah, right. it's. Uh, it's a scene which has got some significance, actually, if you think about your career in, uh, in later years. We've picked it is from Alive and Kicking, in fact, and it's coming up now. I always wish to forget that one. I don't include it in my bit. Oh, all don't of that family. Out. If I and my mother and my sister can have 12 I'm sweaters still, between no, us, still scratching I'll my nose. have the money from her passage. And then there'll be plenty of time for that kind of nonsense. I've waited for you for nearly a year already. Well, it's... Well, it's worse than waiting for your dinner on a cold day when you've had no breakfast. You are half a man, you've been hitting yourself. If... If I were half a man, I'd... That's not bad, is it? And I must say, I've lived in sin ever since. <laughs> <laughs> Alive and kicking, that was made some time ago. I agree with you, I think you are better looking now than you were on that. I think so, don't you? Yeah, but I you're do. still scratching your nose, aren't you? Do you know why, you see? Because you've even noticed that that nose which you will see a close shot in the movie. In my earlier movies, I had, I broke my nose nine times, in fact. And if, you, if there was a close shot, we haven't got it, I think, there you'll see there was a slight break in the nose here. And I kept getting it broken as my career went on a bit. This is all before Sporting Life. And then I went through the window of a car and uh, smashed the nose completely, completely smashed, gone. And so I went to hospital and I have, believe it or not, I had, uh, I had a, a, a they, they blew up my face 15 feet. Isn't that terrible 15 foot face of Harris? But they blew up a 15 foot face in the operating room. And this doctor, a marvelous doctor in London, actually took a bone out of my hip. And he, and he, and he made the nose exactly as it was before. Look, yeah. if you could look at that there, look. It's fantastic. Can that's you see my, that? that? That's my nose. No. See, that's that? his nose. <laughs> that's my nose. And I want to tell you something. <laughs> When women kiss my nose, they don't realize how close they've got. <laughs> not at all. Bleep, bleep, bleep. No, not at all. Listen, you mentioned there uh, the film that I suppose uh, you would look back on with, uh, apart from pr probably one other with most regard, and that was Sporting Life. Wasn't yes. It? Yeah, you enjoyed making that movie. I loved it, yeah. yeah. I loved it. It was tough. Yeah. It was a tough movie to make, right? Yeah. I really, I really, I really enjoyed it because you know, those fellas up there, uh, I had to train. I, I took the, you know, I, I take my work extremely seriously, despite what the, my reputation in the press and my private life is, which is kind of rabelaisian and, and that. But I take my career seriously, and I went up to, uh, I went up to um, Leeds, Wakefield, and I, and I studied there with the players for about three or four weeks, you know, yeah. and, uh, and all that, and tugged out with the second team. Hard. They are hard, man, aren't oh, they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, because I remember once is, we... Sorry, go on. No, go, on say, no, go on. Is that the kind of society that, that you like, that you admire? That, well, I, I, find that I, I find that I don't sort of... I don't like actors very much. Don't you? you? Know? No. I think the only actor ever to come into my house was Connery, who I, I like, Sean. I don't like them very much because they... You know, the usual cliche about actors, they speak about nothing else but themselves, you know, normally. Mm. What am I doing here all night? We're talking about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but you've been asked to. I've been asked to, yeah. Asked to. You know, the actors always say, you know, I know it's an old cliche, but it's quite true when they say, let's not talk about me, let's talk about you. What did you think of my last movie? <laughs> 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 it's true. Well, look, that was an entirely different society, and a very sort of masculine based Well, I prefer that. I prefer most of my friends are the musicians, you know, and... Uh, people who have worked extremely hard to get there, you know, mm. people who've come from different kind of backgrounds. And, mm. and I think you always get a better sort of, uh, a better relationship with people when they have come from, not the sort of, uh, when, when it's tough, when their family life was tough, yes. and their parents had to work hard, and they've had to work hard, and they kind of respect uh, their, and the achievements are, 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 more, are more palatable, I think, than yes. when you have to, when yes. things are made too easy. You know? did, did you know, though, Richard, when you did uh, The Sporting Life, that it was going to have make you the kind of, it really made you, you critically at least, didn't it, made you into a big star? Yes. Did, did you realize that when you were I didn't, making it? No, no, not really at all. I just remember the hardship of making it and working with Lindsay Anderson, who was a fantastic director, and Rachel, Rachel Roberts. She was marvelous. Marvelous. Wasn't she? And mm. I think the whole thing was fantastic. I remember the scaring bit, the scaring bit was when you go up, because you see, these football players up in, up in, up in the north, these rugby league players, they always, act, they always imagine that actors are puffs. <laughs> you know what that means, don't you? I mean, I'm going to explain that to you. 
<laughs> they always wear necklaces of puffs. They come with long hair or whatever they are, and they're sort of they put makeup on in the morning and they get a mascara on the eyes and they get a little little pancake in the face and they reckon they're a bit sort of uh, like that. So I thought I went up there first and those odd remarks were, you know, bloody watch him, lad. Yeah. Yeah. No, don't turn your back on him, I'll tell you that, lad. Watch him on the way. Bloody long, yeah, watch him, watch him. Ooh. The way he crosses his knees and I'm sitting, sitting back and crossing my knees. The way he puts his hand in his head and I'm thinking, oh, this is terrible. So I think, now what am I going to do? I have to play football with him. So I came back to London and I went to Richmond Rugby Club and did a great goal kicker there. Marvellous goal kicker. And when I was at school, I, had a, I was pretty good at football. And I had a great facility to kick a goal, which was years past since then. So I went to this goal kicker and I said, look, do me a favour. I said, would you every night teach me to kick a goal, to get the precision of it right? So I went to a gym and I worked on the legs, the precision, the timing, clock, the legs, weights and the legs. And I went every single night for about six weeks before the movie just to kick a goal. Now came the first day shooting. We all went up there, and all these big, ifty footballers all came out and failed, lad, and they were all running around like this. And then I said to them, is that what you have to do to make a living? Is that what you chase a little ball around the field like that? I said, you're a strange lot, you know. I was watching you last night, I said. All of you get into the tub together, all naked. I was watching, I said. Ooh, can't fool Harris. I reckon what's going on here. And you've got to kick this little ball over that bar. And they said, ah, bloody hell, you've got to, lad. I said, that's a simple kick. I said, give us a decent kick. So he said, they all winked. And they went down about 40 yards. That's a good kick. And I put it down. Six weeks training, right? And I placed it down the floor like that. And I took a step back and they're all going... <clears throat> because, you know, I was sort of doing this. And, Excuse me a second. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting it ready, you see, and putting it down. And, and I then closed my eyes and I said a little prayer. And I said, if there was ever a God in heaven, put wings on that ball and, and carry it over. So I stood back. And I kicked it, and it went over. And from that moment on, I was in. Yeah. I became you the chum. It. Yeah, I became a chum of them all then. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. Film. Let's have a look at, let's remind ourselves of that uh, film, Richard. It's a scene with Rachel Roberts, who you mentioned earlier. And it's a sequence where you, Frank Machen, have just signed on for the club, and you've got the check in your pocket. You go back to tell her about it. It's coming up now. Johnson called earlier on. That friend of yours. I've just seen him. I mean, he's been waiting all this time. It was hours ago. He likes to get out and about a bit. You should have friends your own age. I have. They've signed me on. Didn't you hear what I said? Yes. You'll be pleased. So will you, and you guess how much it is. I don't know anything about it. Go on, never guess. Just guess how much you think I'm worth. Threepence? Oh, careful, careful. You made a joke. You can't go on cracking jokes like that. You know, you might do yourself an injury. Oh, come on, never guess. Come on. No. Well, I better tell you, since you're so keen. One thousand pounds. Oh. You're a great ape. You don't believe me? Look, I've got the check here in my pocket. One thousand pounds in letters and in numbers. Signed, sealed and delivered, Frank Mershon. They drove me home in their car. A bloody Bentley. It's very good. You don't sound very excited about it. It's a bit more than I got when my husband died. Well, isn't that right bloody handsome of you? You didn't have to do anything for it. You mean I didn't have to get killed for it? Some people have life made for them. That's right, Mrs. Hammond, and some people make it for themselves. <laughs> it's about time you took that ton of rock off your shoulders. Don't wake me in the morning, I might be dead. Well, Machen, of course, in that film was a, essentially a sort of violent man, wasn't it? It's the one way he sort of expressed himself. It, I mean, are you violent, Richard? Uh, only when I'm picked on. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I, I don't. I, 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 the... Well, yes. I, I, I... <laughs> Which is it to be, yes or no? Well, I suppose, I suppose that I try to avoid trouble, you know, as much as I can. But when it comes, you know, I like to walk away from it a lot, not because mm. I'm a coward. But, uh, in fact, I am. I'm a, I'm a converted coward mm. at this stage of my life. But I think that, you know, one gets into these, uh, these rows and, uh, uh, and the press build them up, you know. Yes. And did they, um... But, I mean, how do you get into them? I mean, it, it, does it, is it always happen that people pick on you or what? Well, well either friends been insulted <coughs> or uh, I'm been insulted. I remember sort of one row. I was, what was it? I was not thinking of... Oh, yes, the row that uh, I was at, uh, at the... Uh, at the... Uh, Talk of the town. Oh yes, the Sammy, Sammy Davis, Davis row. We were there at a party, and there was some fella sitting beside us. And, and uh, he didn't—he he took an instant dislike to Sammy, and he began to call him a yid, you know, and a nigger, and all that. And uh, Davis is kind of a friend of mine, so I just asked him would he keep quiet. We were enjoying the show, and he kept on again. He kept on. I kept saying, "Listen, honestly, we are enjoying the show," you know. So he kept on, and he called Sammy some more things, and I um, took the law into my own hands and hit him with it. <laughs> 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 And can we talk now a bit about the, uh, the people that you've, uh, you've worked with in, uh, in the film industry? Because uh, you've, got, you've had a reputation throughout your career of uh, occasionally not getting on, which is putting it mildly, with some of the people you've worked with. Putting um, it very mildly. Yeah, very mildly. In fact, the first reported thing that I found of this was, was Brando, wasn't it, in Mutiny on the Bounty, where you didn't seem to get on at all, did you? Well, I, no, I didn't get on. And the thing is that Brando and I, I, I he was the star of the movie, and really my first starring part was it came before I did Sporting Life. The only thing that kind of worried me about him was that he didn't sort of, he did not turn up, you know. I tell you something interesting, you know, how actors, for instance, now, you know, in all this business about talking about Marl, I think he's a fantastic actor. Yes, well, that's I think he's probably one of the greatest actors mm -hmm. of all time. His <clears throat> facility was so powerful. He mm -hmm. had all the facilities of almost everything, probably except, except comedy. I don't think he was a good comic. He tried comedy. But everything else, he had a marvelous facility. But how he developed things is extraordinary. How actors develop style is very interesting. And Marl and style. Of, of developing style of acting. It's very interesting for those who are interested really in movies. Marlon developed a style of acting because in some strange way he either didn't want to because of his method upbringing, that everything should be real, his, his lines, or else he actually couldn't remember. But he couldn't remember lines. Now whether it was because he didn't want to or he couldn't. So what he would do is he'd do a scene with you and he'd have like, that's the camera there, say here, and he would have beside the camera a big board and the lines would be on the board, you see. And that's how he developed that terrific look, that great Brandonian look. As he's talking to you in a scene, and suddenly he will do this. <laughs> right? That's because, that's because he's looking at the lines. He's reading the lines. I remember, do you remember once? <laughs> it's true. It's true. I promise. And, 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 and I, I would have thought that one time, you know, when he was doing, remember doing Julius Caesar? <clears throat> this probably happened, because there's one marvelous part in Julius Caesar where, he, where this happens, and he, he's, he's there, and he's standing up in his toga, and uh, he's doing, uh, he says, Almighty Caesar, dost thou rise so low? Art all thy glory's triumph spoils shrunk to this little measure? Uh, uh. <laughs> now I know as sure as hell, Shakespeare never wrote that. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so then it happens, and he goes, uh, and then you'll see it happening. I know not, gentlemen, what you intend to us. <laughs> <laughs> He's reading it out. He's reading it out. It's fascinating how, they, how, how, how they're all sort of stars come yeah. out of things like that. Yeah, yeah. What about the women? Doris Day you work with, isn't she? She's sort of Somebody asked me once, what's the most dangerous thing you ever did in a movie? And I said, kiss Doris Day. <laughs> <laughs> about, about singing now and, uh, and Camelot, the thing that uh, that's, I think the, my favourite movie, well, not the movie, but my favourite performance of yours, I think. I enjoy that performance immensely. Yes. Um, what is it rate with you? Do you, when you look at it now, do you think it's one of your best? Well, I do. Um, I, I enjoyed it. It was a big thing for me, really, a big sort of commercial break for me to get it. It was difficult in getting it. When I got it, I sort of took it. As, uh, I, I, I didn't re relinquish the responsibility of it and the intentions of making it a kind of successful movie. I think it's quite successful. It just, it just took so long to make. It took nine months. Yeah. You know? I mean, women have children in nine months. Yeah, right. And, and I think that it just took that long. And, um, it, it, and it, it's a great effort in a movie to maintain a kind of emotional or even intellectual um, impetus through nine months. Yes. I mean, you, you flourish for the first two or three or four months on the sort of emotion of it. But then you find you have to uh, invent it, invent emotion. You have to sort of maintain a kind of drive, but which about, is exhausting. What about the singing, though? Did that frighten you? Because, I mean, previously you've not, you're not sung before, have no, you? No, it terrified. 
absolutely terrified. Terrified. I remember to do my first number. I had to do How to Handle a Woman. Oh, it's a lovely song. It is. And I came up to do it, and I remember.